Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing what I think is the mid-year book freakout tag. Or it may just be the mid-year book tag, I don't know. I was tagged to do this by Charles Heathcote. As far as I can tell, the original vid version of this tag no longer exists, and I don't know who made it. So feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, there are, how many questions? 15 questions and then I'm going to tag some people. One other thing I should mention is that there is some crossover between this and the mid-year check-in tag which I created with Harriet Rosie and I recently did. So where there is crossover, which is only with a couple of the questions, I've kind of gone for different answers as well because there were a lot of questions where it could be any of a few books. So question one, best book you've read so far in 2019? For that, I'm going to go for Yanis Yonev's Doom 94. This is basically a Latvian novel. Uh, it's kind of a true story in the sense of, say, On the Road is, in terms of that it's basically a true story with some of the characters' names changed. And uh, so th I guess this is the Latvian On the Road. It was written about a period in 1994, so it actually starts with Kurt Cobain's death, but then kind of goes on to some of the more hardcore metal bands like Mayhem and Burzum, the whole Norwegian church burning scene. Cynic gets a mention in this as well. So if you're into like metal music, you'll probably like this, but also it's a great one for like, it is, it's it's, Lat it's Latvia's answer to On The Road, and I guess The Catcher in the Rye, but not really, just in the sense that it's a coming of age story, you know, but with a much more likeable uh, protagonist. Question number two, best sequel you've read so far in 2019? I don't read many sequels, but what sprung to mind was Lock and Key Volume 2, Head Games by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. And that's just because so far I'm three books in of the six of the, uh, what are they, the volumes that, that bring together the original comics. And I'm really enjoying it. Question number three, a new release you haven't read yet but want to. That would be uh, Stephen Colgan's new book. I'm not sure what it's called. I know the old one was called A Murder to Die For and I'll link to below. And it's basically like a humorous crime novel. I think it's called The Diabolical Club, actually, and it's kind of based loosely on the Hellfire Club, which is a real thing that happened here in High Wycombe, where it was like a secret society in some caves. So yeah, that's coming out through Unbound, and I've like pledged to support it, so I get like an edition as soon as it's shipped, and I think it's getting shipped any day. Question number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. That would be Ollie Jacobs' new book called uh, Deep Down There, which is also coming out through Unbound. I'll link to below to where you can find out more about both of these authors. I need to sneeze. Let me look at the bright light. Oh, Jesus. There's something so satisfying about sneezes. I'm going to leave this in because why not? So, yeah, Ollie's new book is coming out soon. I've also pledged my support for that. And, uh, yeah, once it gets to 100% funding, I, I think it's on, like, 70% at the moment, then it goes to print. Well, it goes to editing and then print. Question number five, biggest disappointment. That would be The Beautiful Cassandra by Jane Austen, Penguin Little Black Classic number 33. And the reason being, these are short stories that Austen wrote to entertain her family. As a teenager, they were never really meant for public consumption. And it just seems like a really odd choice of material to include in the Penguin Little Black Classics when it could have been any Jane Austen. And I've never read Austen before, and I think this is probably the worst possible introduction to her work you could get. So I'm going to give her another go anyway with persuasion, but this was terrible. But I don't, it wasn't meant for public consumption. Also, she can't spell at all. Question number six, biggest surprise. That would be The Great Fire of London by Samuel Pepys. And the reason this is a surprise was that I really enjoyed it. To be fair, this is only excerpts from 1665 about the Great, uh, about the Black Death and then about the Great Fire of London in 1666. And it was fascinating to get this kind of blow-by-blow -blow depiction of what was happening as the fire progressed. And like people were like moving all of their stuff to say their brother's house, and then the fire would spread, and then they'd have to move all of their stuff and all of their brother's house to say the church. And then the, ch the fire would spread again, and everyone's moving stuff out of the church. It was crazy. So I want to read his uh, full diaries at some point, even though I can imagine the full thing will be quite tedious, but what the hey. Question number seven, favourite new author, debut or new to you? So I'm breaking the rules slightly a, a, a bit here because I did read Heart Shaped Box last year, but I'm going for Joe Hill. This is uh, Welcome to Lovecraft, volume one of Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. And basically it's just because I've been reading loads of his stuff recently, but also my girlfriend's got into him as well. So he's kind of become a favourite just because we'll both read his books and talk about them, which I think is quite quite cool. Question number eight, newest fictional crush.
Question number nine. Newest favourite character. Actually, I did maybe have a bit of a fictional crush on this one. It would be the librarian from Nosferatu. I can't remember what her name was. But she was mental, basically. And my mom has always told me that, like, my ideal woman is crazy, basically. Uh, which is why I'm with Bex now. But... She, yeah, she had like, she was like burning herself with cigarettes and then using like heroin because when she was in pain she could use her powers more and she could use scrabble tiles to like get messages from from like the other world. It was, it was mad. She was awesome. Question number 10. Book that made you cry in brackets saddest book that you have read. So I don't really cry at books but one of the saddest books I've read is Socrates Defense by Plato. This is the Penguin's Little Black Classic number 52 and this is basically, uh, well... Socrates was Plato's teacher and Socrates was kind of taken to the equivalent of court and later sentenced to death for corrupting the youth of Athens and this is Plato's account of you know the the argument Socrates gave as to why they shouldn't kill him and this bit particular at the end was really poignant I'm going to read you an excerpt after the sentence of death is approved and Socrates addresses the court for the final time you'll not have bought a lot of time at this price men of Athens getting the name from anyone who wants to abuse the city for being the ones who killed off Socrates, a wise man. People who want to find fault with Athens will of course say that I'm wise even if I'm not. At any rate, if you'd waited a little time, you'd have had the same outcome without doing anything. You can see my age for yourselves, how far on I am in life, how near to death. I say this not to all of you, just to those of you who voted to put me to death. And I've got something else to say to those people. You probably imagine, Athenians, that I stand condemned because I lack the sorts of arguments with which I could have persuaded you, given always that I supposed I should do and say everything to escape the penalty. Far from it, if I've been condemned for the lack of something, it's not a lack of arguments but a lack of effrontery and shamelessness and the willingness to address you in the sorts of ways that it would please you most to hear. Wailing and lamenting and doing and saying plenty of other things unworthy of me, as I claim, even if they're the sorts of things you're used to hearing from everyone else. Yeah, powerful stuff. You should read this. Question number 11. A book that made you happy. That would be The Witch's Vacuum Cleaner and Other Stories by Terry Pratchett. And that's just because Terry Pratchett's my favourite author. And these are kind of mixed short stories that... Some, like they don't really tie into the Discworld or anything. Most of them were published when he was actually writing for the no my local newspaper, the, which the head office is like two miles that way. I used to go past it on my way to work every day, which is quite cool. So uh, yeah, it just made me feel kind of like nostalgic for when I first fell in love with Pratchett. Question number 12. Favourite book to film adaptation you saw this year? Literally the only one I could think of was Horns by Joe Hill, and that was terrible. Uh, we've actually got a video coming soon where me and my other half we're going to discuss both the novel which we both read and then we watch the movie together. I think I liked the movie more than she did but the movie was still like a 3.25 out of 5. So, and I think Beck said it was like a 2 out of 5. Question 13. Favourite review you've written this year? And then in brackets, the booktube version, favourite video you have done so far this year. And so I think for me it'd be my two recent birthday vlogs. So my turning 30, visiting Tamworth Castle and the National Arboretum vlog. And then the next weekend after that we went to Science Museum in London. And then to see The Mousetrap by Agatha Christie. So yeah, those were both fun. Question number 14. Most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? So I'm going to cut to some footage here of one of my old hauls. I've actually already sold this book. This is the Green Fairy book by Andrew Lang. And it's a Folio Society edition. And I bought it for £2 and then sold it for £30. Actually, I will show you what else I got because I'm quite proud of this. This is the Green Fairy book by Andrew Lang. Uh, a, a Folio Society edition in the slipcase look. Uh, you know green pages you can't actually see that because of the light oh no they're white there but green on the top uh, really really nice look really nice interiors the only problem is somebody has written on it somewhere where did they write on it there we go someone's written on it but uh, they sold this for, for two pounds which is about three three US dollars and I looked it up and it's worth well it's it's selling on eBay for about 40 to 60 pounds. And question number 15, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So basically like all of my TBR, I'm trying to get it down as low as possible. It's currently on 165, but I think I started on about 250, so I'm working on that. So yeah, that. So there we have it. That's what I made of this tag. I'm gonna tag some people now. I'm gonna tag uh, Cameron from uh, Cam, Cam C. Wolf from Wolf, so Wolf Shop Publishing because he sent me this t-shirt and it's lovely. I'll also link below to where you can get one if you'd like. I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian. I'm going to tag 
Jason's Weird Reads, and I'm going to tag Emma Rosen Books. Yeah, and I'm going to tag Bruise and Reviews as well. But I don't know whether people have already done this or not, so I'm just going mental with the tags, and feel free to not do it, or even if I haven't tagged you, you're now officially tagged. So on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of my answers, whether you've read any of these books, etc, etc. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.